Thank you for inviting me here. And since I have 40 minutes exactly, I will be prompt and begin with what we're going to talk about in the next time here together. I'll go through three items really with you. The first is cultural competence, a little bit of context and definitions. The second will be a conversation about culture. What is culture and how do we experience it? And then finally, cultural humility, the origins, the principles, and the practice. And so I invite you to relax and enjoy. So I'm going to traverse about 50 years in this one slide by just reminding us that really the roots of this discussion about culture and difference starts with the civil rights movement and the ethnic health advocacy movements of the 1960s. How many people in this room were, were, uh, were born, were alive in the 60s? <laughs> okay, so I take it the rest of you are yet to be born. Um, so you can see that you have many people in this room who can tell you firsthand stories about that period in our history and the civil rights movement and the rush towards equality and social justice. And this kind of work that we talk about now, culture, cultural competence, culture and health, was really shaped academically by the fields of sociology and anthropology in the late 70s and 80s. Medicine comes later, as often we do, to these discussions of importance. And the original definition about cultural competence is from the field of mental health in 1989, and I will show you that in a few moments. And today, as you well know, the discussion about cultural competence is framed often in this conversation of racial and ethnic health disparities, a movement, a movement that began really in the 90s under the leadership of Dr. David Satcher. If we think about using the term cultural competence today, and certainly in your educational process, I understand that I am speaking mostly to first and second year medical students, you'll see that the current definitions, which have developed over time, really reflect a couple of themes. The first is culture. What is culture? The relationship of culture and language, but keeping them distinct, and then the idea of competence. So here's the, the definition from Terry Cross in 1989. Uh, Terry Cross is a Native American um, academic. He wrote about the work of cultural competence in response to his experience as a person of Indian descent working with Indian children in the Northwest and feeling that there were cultural issues that were not being attended to properly. And so here is the definition. I give it to you um, as a historical piece and a current piece as well. Important words in here have to do with the idea that this idea of cultural competence is really a set of congruent behaviors, attitudes, and policies that happen for us as individuals, but also happen within the institution or the system within which we are working. Here's his, uh, his phrase about what competence is. It's, competence is a word that actually mm, makes me feel kind of like that, um, in that I, I can't imagine being competent ever at anything completely. Um, and I love to dance, and I'm a really good dancer, but competent, I'm not sure. Nonetheless, <laughs> it, is, it is in this definition, cultural competence, and so here you have it to refer to. The part of it that I like to think about and keep with me is that it's having the capacity to function effectively. It doesn't say that you do or that you are ultimately going to, but that you have the capacity to function effectively in these different circumstances. So the 21st century themes, now that we've jumped through about 50 years of history, um, to remind us that we think about cultural competence and think about culture in broadly defined terms, that culture and language are intimate but they are independent, and that the rationale for cultural competence and the rationale for your learning this work and using it in the room with every patient that we see, because of course every situation is a cross-cultural situation, is really now being described in the context of health policy and practice as we move towards being a society where we can eliminate racial and ethnic health disparities. In the country, these very important institutions that do guide our work as physicians have made it clear that the elimination of racial and ethnic health disparities is preeminent. The National Institute of Health has a center on minority health and health disparities. The Healthy People 2010 uh, document makes it clear that there should be no difference in health outcomes for any of us based on skin color or heritage by the end of 2010. And this important report on equal treatment confronting racial and ethnic health disparities 
really has given us the opportunity, especially as physicians and physician, people who are learning to be physicians, to understand that, yes, we do bring our own selves, our full selves, with our biases, our stereotypes, and our senses of prejudice to our encounters as physicians, and that it's a piece of work that we must, we must pay attention to and change if we are to contribute to make our contribution to eliminating racial and ethnic health disparities. This piece is just to remind us that um, 15, 20 years ago when we were talking about this work, we would often be met with the phrase, oh, this is just touchy-feely, oh, this doesn't have to be learned, oh, this isn't important, oh, cast it by the wayside. You can see here that now there is a big rationale for cultural competence in healthcare for us to learn it, for us to know it, for us to live it in all of our work as physicians. And it includes not only responding to the demographic changes of the United States, which will forever look global, uh, but also it reminds us that it's connected to really improving the quality of services and outcomes for the families and individuals that we serve. So here we sit together today. I know you can't find your face in there, but here we sit together today. And uh, we are now faced with this question of, oh, that's wonderful, a huge charge, a big charge, but now how do we do this along with everything else that we are being asked to do as we embark into our work as learning to be physicians? I'm going to talk a little bit and have us talk together a bit about um, what does, what's our common language here when we talk about culture. It's great, I think, that we come to this work Pretty much everybody in the room, if you just give me a show of hands, how many people heard cultural competence before you got here today? Okay, great. Fifteen years ago, eh, maybe two hands. So it's, it's relatively commonplace. I would, I would step out on the limb where the grapefruit is and say that um, I can imagine, though, we haven't had full discussions with each other about what does culture mean. Show of hands, how many people have had really great deep discussions about what is culture? Okay, good quite a bit of the room, so this should be very lively and wonderful. These other terms as well need discussion. We are not, of course, going to do that today in the 40 minutes, but I would encourage you, no, I would say put at the center of your heart the importance of having intimate discussions that address race. What is race? Racism. What is that? Ethnicity. Not certain. Class, and on and on and on. Just to remember that we must be certain that we can do what we are asking of others. So just a few mentions about culture here. Here's a, a very academic -y definition of culture, integrated patterns of human behavior that we learn and include all of these dimensions that you see on this slide for different groups. Here's one I like better. I'm going to read it out loud. It's from literature. Culture is a society's style, its way of living and dying, it embraces the erotic and the culinary arts, dancing and burial, courtesy and curses, work and leisure, rituals and festivals, punishments and rewards. Dealing with the dead and with the ghosts who people our dreams, attitudes toward women, children, old people and strangers, enemies and allies, eternity in the present, the here and now and the beyond just a sense of culture. So what is it? What is culture? Shared systems of values and beliefs. People in this room, I think, understand that. You, many of you, almost all of you raised your hands that you've had some discussion about culture. It's how we see the world. There are learned patterns of behavior. I want to say this many, many times and encourage you to say this many, many times to each other. Learned patterns of behavior. There's a wonderful piece by Joseph Marshall in a book called The Dance House where he talks about a child who's born into a Crow tribe, who's stolen away by the Lakota and is raised as a Lakota. 